All right, welcome to part four of our data grid series. In this part, we're going to start creating a new data grid and customize it. Okay, so that being said, I already created a new project. Let me just show you here. It's a new one I created, I called WPF Custom Data Grid. And this is the original one we worked together. So new one, the original one. Okay, um, and the other couple of things I did, I copied the classes we had in the origin project and the code behind file. I copied those over to the new one uh, right here. So Sans, Sung, and the Enum. Okay, that's it, except I went ahead and set the data context. So those. A uh, few things I did so far so that you can catch up if you want to follow along. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and add a new data grid. Okay, let's open close and our data grid was added. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to set the font size to 14. And let's go ahead and set the item source to binding song list okay so as soon as we do that we get our data in here let's build and run this okay so for a lot of people this default data grid does the job but again it's not the purpose of this tutorial we're going to customize the hell out of it. All right, that being said, let's start digging into it. All right, so I'm gonna expand this tag. And I'm going to open close a data grid dot columns tag, okay? So as soon as we do that, data disappears from here. But if we build this again, data comes back so normally this flags the data grid hey uh, i'm gonna set my start setting my columns so you don't have to worry about it and the reason we got the data back it's because let's actually go ahead and add a new column so the first column i'm going to add is going to be the id column and this is going to be a type of data grid text column i'm going to set the header to id and the uh, binding to binding ID, okay? So when I do that, and data disappears again, but if I rebuild this, the data comes back with the addition of our custom column, okay? That's because we need to set the auto generated property, auto generated columns property to false. So we are telling the data grid, you don't worry about this plain data, I'm gonna handle that. Okay? So if I build this again, we should only have our single column that we just added. And let's run this, make sure it is in fact that way. And sure enough. Okay, so we added our ID column, which is a data grid text column. So let's add another one. All right, so the options we have here, we have a data grid text column, a template column, a checkbox column, a data grid comma box column, and a hyperlink column. So we have quite a few options. For most part, we're going to be using data grid text column. Okay, so the next property we're going to use, I mean need, is the um, <clears throat> title, the song title, right? I mean, you can type in anything you want in here. You can say song title if you want to. It's just header, doesn't affect anything. And we'll bind to um, the title property. Okay, now we got our song title column populated. 
that's great. Um, I'm going to actually start copying and pasting to make this process a little faster. So the next one is going to be the artist. And it's going to be bound to the artist property, like so. Okay, so we've got three columns in. And we've got a few more to go. So we have the soundtrack, which is a checkbox. All right, so that's going to be a data grid checkbox column, as the name refers to. All right, and the header is going to be, I want this, instead of saying is soundtrack, I just want to say soundtrack. And binding is going to be bound to a soundtrack property. Okay. And so far, so good. Let's uh, rebuild this. Make sure it doesn't break. Okay. Let's see. So our soundtrack column is in. Let's run this actually. Okay, so we've got four columns in, including our checkbox column. Okay. Our next one, it's going to be um, movie title, right? So that's going to be another data grid text column. And the header is going to be movie title. And the property we need is be is going to be movie title. Okay, so we got that in. And the next one it's going to be the genre, and then we'll have the release here. So genre is next. Genre is going to be a little tricky. And we probably let's see. This is going to be a combo box column, right? Let's get a header. And I'm going to close this right here. I'm going to come back to this later. I'm going to move on to the next one. And that's going to be another text box column. Let's get a header. Uh, instead of release here, I want to say year. And Binding, it's going to be bound to the release your property. Okay. All right, so we got that in. All right, now let's go back to our genre. Actually, let's build and run this once before we proceed. Build succeeds. Let's uh, run this. Okay, so we got our release here. We got our genre. genre. Genre is a combo box column, so. But we need to get the data. So, um, for genre, okay. We need an item source, right? And it's going to be binding to genre, but if I type in genre, we don't see that. That's because um, I think I have covered this before, but we need for data, uh, for we need an object data provider for combo box. I think I have a tutorial called object data provider. I mean, you can revisit that if you need to, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a object data pro Actually first, I need a um, window resources tag And then in here, I need the object data provider. I need a key. I'm going to call this object data provider. OK, I need um, think type. Actually, let's see. Object type. I need an object type. 
which is going to be X type. Okay, here we got another roadblock because I need to bring a namespace. So let me close this here and go up here right below. I mean, it doesn't matter, but I'm, I'm going to go right below here. I'm going to add another no namespace, XMLNS. I'm going to call this genre enum. Okay, for this I'm going to need a CLR dash system semicolon <clears throat> assembly. Um, I must call it. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. If you don't remember this, just try this. I mean, sometimes it can be a pain in the neck. So as soon as you type in the CLR, you can see this a system security claims MS Corlib. Click on that. Just get rid of this part that says security claims. Remove that part and you should be all set. Okay. All right. So once we do that, now I can refer to my uh, genre in now whoopsie genre you know column just enum type in enum you are referring to our enum class which is in this um, namespace okay all right after that we are going to need a method name and the method name we need is get names And then we're going to I'm going to expand this object data provider. And we're going to need set method parameters. Okay. In here we're going to need the X type, whoops, and type name. And this is going to be local genre. Okay, that's it. All right, now that we have that um, object data provider, we can go back in our combo box column and set the binding, item source binding to source, open close curly braces, binding, actually not binding, static resource, and bring an object data provider. Okay, the key that we designed up here this key here okay so this is getting our collection data and we are setting the item source we are tying into the object data provider so now if we build and run this we should have our data listed in our comma box. Uh, looks like we have another roadblock here. Our data is not displayed here. And that's relatively a quick, easy fix. So all we need to do is inside our comma box uh, column, we're going to need to set the binding, text binding actually, text binding set to um, genre. Now we have the IntelliSense actually. So as soon as we type in G, genre displays now that we know we are doing something right. Okay, so now our data is displayed back in place. Perfect, so far so good. Let's run this one more time. And there it is. Okay, so we got our selected item displaying with the correct data for each record. Okay, uh, let's go back to this year column. Really, here all I need is the year. I don't want the rest of the information. So let's go ahead and do a quick 
quick format. And this is what good about custom data grid, doing your own columns. You can format it easily. So if I go in here and set the string format to YYY, and there you go. You are good to go. You have just the year displayed instead of the whole date. Okay. So that's the beauty of customizing your data grid. Okay. All right, so um, we have one more property to go, and that's going to be the URL property. And that one is just as easy as text box, I mean text column. So let's go ahead and add that in as well. So we're going to grab the data grid hyperlink column, set the header, let's call this just URL. And let's bind to the property URL. Okay. Simple as that. All right, let's run this again. Okay, so we have oral information in displayed in our data grid as we are supposed to. Um, I think I'm going to stop right here and continue in the next part with uh, more stuff, okay? So until then, take it easy. I'll see you, okay? All right, bye now.